from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. He then told them a parable on the need for them to pray always and not become discouraged. There was a judge in one town who didn't fear God or respect man. And a widow in that town kept coming to him saying, give me justice against my adversary. For a while, he was unwilling. But later, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or respect man, yet because this widow keeps pestering me, I will give her justice so she doesn't wear me out by her persistent coming. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his elect who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay to help them? I tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find that faith on earth? Thus, in the reading of the scripture, I read in your hearing from the Holy Christian Standard Bible, I read Luke, the 18th chapter. I read the first eight verses. Let us, uh, at this time, we want to um, prepare our hearts for uh, our altar prayer. We certainly want to remember those persons who have gone on to be with the Lord. We want to remember their families and uh, their loved ones, their friends, their neighbors. Uh, we want to particularly continue to pray for those persons who are sick and suffering from the coronavirus. We want to continue to pray for our first responders, our medical personnel that are on the front lines. We want to, um, we want to pray for uh, all of our essential workers. We thank God, I thank God, that um, the numbers in New York has gone down. I, I, I do believe, brothers and sisters, uh, there is a, a that there is an anticipation that the numbers will go up even here in New York as things open up, as we move from phase one to phase two, from phase two to phase three, from phase three to phase four. It is conceivable that um, uh, our numbers will go up. And so I certainly want to encourage each and every one of us to continue to do what we've been doing. That is to wear your mask in public, whenever you go outside. Listen, and can I just say something? If, you, if you're gonna knock on somebody's door, if, you, if you're gonna knock on somebody's door during a public pandemic, a worldwide pandemic, please wear your mask when you do it. Um, for real, for real. Um, and then you wanna keep your distance, amen. Keep your distance. Uh, they're saying at least six feet. There's nothing wrong with keeping uh, more distance than that. We want to certainly encourage you to wash your hands frequently. And uh, if you can walk around with sanitizer, do that also. And so we certainly want to encourage all of us to continue to be steadfast uh, in our endeavor to be safe from the coronavirus. We want to pray for the members of South Hempstead Baptist Church, all of our officers, all of our leaders, all of our auxiliaries. We want to pray or uh, pastors all over these United States, all over the world, men and women who are standing before God's people in these challenging times to uh, encourage them to hold on to God's unchanging hand. So we certainly want to uh, pray for uh, pastors throughout the world and pray for every congregation that gathers in their homes or wherever they're gathering, that gather in the name of Jesus. For well, we know that uh, where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in the midst of, uh, of them. And so we certainly want to encourage each and every one of you to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Let us bow for a word of prayer. God, we come to you this morning, Lord, first of all, to say thank you, Lord. You have been so good to us. You have been better to us than we've been to ourselves. You have looked beyond our faults. You have seen our needs. You have supplied all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And so, God, we say thank you. 
we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for thinking enough about us to keep watch over our heartbeats all night long. Thank you, Lord, for thinking enough about us to touch us with your finger of love early this morning. Thank you, Lord, for thinking about us, for keeping us uh, in our right mind uh, with the, the activities of our limbs, uh, enjoying a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you, Lord, for thinking about us, for putting, uh, for putting in our hearts and in our minds a desire to worship you on this Lord's day. So, God, as we come before you, uh, we're casting our cares on you because we know you care for us. We ask, oh God, your richest blessings upon those who are sick and suffering with the COVID virus. <clears throat> we ask, oh God, that you'll bless those persons who, have, uh, 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 who are caring for the sick and the dying. We pray, oh God, that you'll bless the families, those who are in bereavement, who have lost their loved ones, who have been called from labor to reward. Let them know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. And so God, we just pray, oh Lord, your richest blessings on, on all the first responders, all the medical personnel, all the essential workers. Lord, we're praying for our seniors, Lord. We're praying for our young people. We're praying for our children. Lord, we're praying for each and every one of us. We're praying for every pastor that stands before your people to declare what thus saith the Lord. Grant them words from on high, words of encouragement to give to your people during these trying times. We pray, oh God, that you'll bless the protesters that are on the streets in every major city across this nation and across this world. We pray, oh God, that they will continue to lift up the bloodstained banner along with those who are in the church. And we pray, oh God, that the day will come when justice will be uh, will justice will be administered here in the United States and throughout this world. So, God, we just pray that you'll just continue to have your way in our lives. Now, God, we pray that you will help us to live our lives so pleasing in your sight that when it is your time to call us and our time to answer, we pray that we will be ready. And then, Lord, until that time, we just want to tell you that we love you, Lord. We want to tell you that we adore you. We want to worship you. We want to exalt you. We want to glorify you. We want to magnify you. We want to lift you up and to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Lord, help us to live right. Help us, Lord, to be ready. Help us, Lord, to be able to hear your welcome voice saying, well done, my good and faithful servant. Lord, these and all other blessings we ask and we declare in the precious and in the powerful name of Jesus. And for his name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen, amen. We certainly want to encourage each and every one of us to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Listen, it doesn't matter what it looked like. God is greater than what it looked like. And so we certainly want to encourage each and every one of you to don't let go. Amen. God will never leave us. God will never forsake us. I'm, I'm under the impression that even when you want to let go, that God is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. And so we certainly want to thank God for the privilege and the power of prayer. At this time, brothers and sisters, we want to prepare uh, our hearts and our minds for, um, for our uh, offering. I, I do want to say, I do want to say that this is fourth Sunday in June and uh, members of the South Hempstead Baptist Church know that uh, uh, if it wasn't for the pandemic, we would be coming back here tonight at 7 p.m. to help our ushers celebrate their annual day. And of course, uh, everything is on pause now as far as anniversaries and activities. And so uh, we will not be back here uh, tonight at 7. However, however, we want to encourage all of our members, all of our friends um, to uh, not only give um, to uh, uh, give your tithes and offerings to the evangelical ministry here at South Hempstead, but we also want to encourage you to give to the ushers anniversary. Um, our ushers support everything that goes on here at South Hempstead. There is not uh, a program, there is not a uh, an anniversary, there's not a service that uh, 
that our ushers are not in attendance. And so um, they're in, in a very real way, they are unsung heroes, but we certainly thank God for our ushers. And uh, this evening would be, uh, would be their anniversary. So as you prepare to give your tithes and offerings, please, brothers and sisters, give something towards uh, our ushers' anniversary this afternoon. At this time, uh, let me just quickly say, I think everyone knows there are several ways to give to the evangelical ministry here at South Hempstead. Number one, after service, you can drive by and put your offering. Listen, in the secure, um, in the secure mailbox, amen, of the church, amen. Please, brothers and sisters, do not, do not uh, just leave your, your offering unattended. Um, uh, certainly, certainly, no matter if it's a check or not. Uh, the, the mailbox is around the side of the church. Amen. Around the side of the church. The side door of the church of, of 81 Maple Avenue. You may have to look for it, but it's not that hard to find. Hallelujah. So we certainly want to encourage you, those who would like to come by after the morning service, to drop your tithes and, uh, and offerings into the secure mailbox of uh, of our church. We certainly want to thank you. You can also put your offering in an envelope, put a stamp on it, address the envelope to South Hempstead Baptist Church, 81 Maple Avenue, Hempstead, New York, 11550. If you do that, we certainly will appreciate you giving uh, by way of U.S. Postal Service. Also, you can give by a GiveLify. Thank God for GiveLify. We have been uh, doing Give Let Live for now close to three years or longer. And so many of us are familiar with that procedure. Please, brothers and sisters, continue to give via Give Let Live. And then finally, the fourth and final way you can give is by a cash app. And of course, our uh, cash app name is Dollar Sign, capital S, capital H, capital B, capital C, the number eight, the number one. Dollar Sign, SHBC, all caps. 81. And if you give uh, through Cash App, we will get that immediately also. And so we certainly want to thank uh, you, brothers and sisters, for the continued support that you have been showing and giving to the South Hempstead Baptist Church. Uh, our financial responsibilities continue even in um, this pandemic time. And so we certainly want to thank you in advance for what you have. We want to thank you uh, for what you have done. We want to thank you for what you're doing, and we want to thank you in advance for what you will do. So at this time, we're going to ask if our musicians will give us some good giving music as uh, we prepare to give our tithes and our offerings. Amen.
say amen. Amen. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for your continued support. Um, we certainly thank you all that we do here at South Hempstead. We're able to do it because of your generosity, because of your support. I do not want anybody to think I take your giving for granted. I do not. I'm keenly aware that people give because they want to particularly support that particular branch of Zion, particularly uh, support that that ministry. And so for that, we say thank you. Let's bow for a word of prayer. God, thank you, Lord, for these gifts. Thank you, Lord. We pray, oh God, that you'll multiply them, sanctify them. May they be used for the purpose in which they are given and received. Bless, Lord, not only the gifts, but bless the givers. Thank you, Lord, for their cheerfulness, their obedience, their faithfulness, and uh, their generosity. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts and the givers. But then, God, we pray that you'll bless even those of us who may not have had to give today. We ask, oh God, that you will open financial doors in their lives so that they too, Lord, will experience the joy and the blessing of giving. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen, and thank God, amen, amen. We certainly believe that uh, if you take care of the house of God, God will take care of your house. And so we certainly want to thank you uh, for your support. Uh, at this uh, time, before we ask our music ministry to come back, uh, I certainly want to quickly announce that this coming Tuesday, this coming Tuesday uh, at 7 o'clock will be our final uh, Bible study uh, class uh, for this session. Amen. After, to, after Tuesday, we will break for the summer. We will break during the month of July, August, and a portion of September. We will resume Bible study uh, the Tuesday after third Sunday in September. So uh, I certainly want to encourage you, if you have not uh, participated in our Bible study, uh, this coming Tuesday, uh, you can get your foot wet your, uh, by, uh, by tuning in uh, our Zoom Bible study if you want uh, to be a part of our Bible study, I need your email address. I need your email address so that I can send you the invitation uh, to um, uh, to Zoom. So we certainly want to uh, encourage you to do that. On Wednesday at 12 noon, on Friday at 7 p.m., we have prayer service. Uh, we thank God for those who are supporting our prayer service. Thank you so very much. I also want to uh, encourage and thank our uh, superintendent uh, and our assistant superintendent of our Sunday school for uh, getting our Sunday school active during this pandemic season. Uh, we are having classes. Uh, uh, all of our classes are meeting uh, either online or via the uh, conference call. And so we certainly want to thank our Sunday school for being in place, our Sunday school for being um, active, amen. We want to continue to pray for uh, one another. Uh, there have been some deaths uh, in and around um, the congregation uh, and, and, and loved ones, and so we certainly want to continue to keep one another in our prayers. At this time, at this time, we're, we're so happy to have our music ministry with us. We're going to ask that they will come now and bless us with a selection of their choosing. Let's say amen as they come forward. Amen. Amen.
praise team, music department, thank you so much for being here. We uh, thank God for another Lord's Day, and uh, I am so thankful to be uh, amongst the saints of God. I'm so thankful to be in the land of the living, and I'm pretty sure I can, I can only imagine that you too are thankful to be in the land of the living. So I want to turn your attention to that passage of scripture that I read in your hearing earlier. Luke, the 18th chapter. <clears throat> I will read the first, uh, the first eight verses. I'll read from the New International Version this time. I think uh, earlier I read from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Now I will read from the New International Version, Luke, the 18th chapter, starting at the first verse. The New International Version reads like this. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Thus, in the reading of the scripture, <clears throat> I read in your hearing um, Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 1 down to and including the 8th verse. Of course, the Lord, the word of the Lord um, the word of the Lord is blessed. Let us let us bow for let us bow for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege, Lord, to call on your holy and your righteous name. We pray, O oh God, that uh, you will uh, speak a word to us, a word that will help each and every one of us live more like Christ. We pray, O oh God, that, uh, that uh, you will have your way in our lives and that all that, uh, all that you say, all that we say and do, Lord, will be to your glory, to your praise, and to your honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray, uh, amen, and thank God, amen. Uh, brothers and sisters, um, I want to uh, I want to call your attention to that passage of scripture and um, and preach from the subject always pray and never give up always pray and never give up you know you know the, the, you know, I, I'm having challenges up here, right here, right now. Is that something? That's all right. Uh, you know what they say, the devil is a liar. <laughs> That's what they say. Amen, amen. Uh, always pray and, uh, and never give up. It may sound a little cliche-ish, but it's true. If ever there was a need for prayer, we sure do need it now. We are living in a time which is difficult to find a comparison. We have never been in a place like this before, certainly not 
within any of our lifetime. First of all, uh, we are in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. As of yesterday, nearly 10 million cases of the coronavirus have uh, been confirmed worldwide, with nearly half of them ending in death. Here in the United States, over 125,000 people have died from this dreaded disease. And that's the ones which have been counted. Only God knows how many people died from the disease who were not counted. We have a president and a vice president who refuse to take this pandemic seriously. Instead, they play down the ravage it is causing our nation. They refuse to wear masks, even though science and medical experts all say wearing a mask will greatly reduce the spread of the virus. They have politicized wearing masks. According to our president, if you wear a mask, it is a sign that you are against him. And if you don't wear a mask, it's a way of showing your support for him. How silly is that? Wearing a mask should have nothing to do with being a Republican or a Democrat, a, a, a Trumper or a never Trumper. Wearing a mask is about containing the virus and not affecting others. It's about not passing on the virus to the elderly and those with underlying health challenges. Secondly, while in the midst of this worldwide pandemic, we are confronted with social and racial unrest here in America and abroad. Uh, uh, it, it took the death of George Floyd, captured on cell phone video for the whole world to see before white people in America began just maybe blacks are being mistreated by police officers. One would have hoped the death of Mr. Floyd would have brought an end to police brutality suffered in the black community, but not so. Almost every other week, we are still hearing about the death of black lives at the hands of police. Illegal choke holds being administered to the throats of our young black men and the injustice that permeates our criminal justice system. Black Lives Matter is more than a slogan, more than an idea conjured up in the minds of a few rebel rousers. It is not a domestic terrorist organization that needs to be put down by militarized police or a passing fad that will be forgotten by next year this time. Rather, it is an undeniable truth whose time has come and cannot be denied. Black lives do matter, and the sooner America accepts this fact, the better she will be. Finally, let me remind you, let me remind us that we are less than 20 weeks away from our national election to either keep our present president or to unseat him, even before becoming the president of these United States. This man bragged about being able to stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and not lose voters. He was recorded on tape admitting to molesting women and getting away with it. He called out black athletes sons of female dogs. The city of Baltimore, where there is a large number of black residents rodent infested and several African countries dung holes. I can't imagine there are people who want this man a second term. But the truth is, there are people who want exactly that. And they will go out on November 3rd and cast their vote or vote by way of absentee ballot. That's why, brothers and sisters, it is imperative that those of us who are not registered to vote get registered. And those of us who are registered, make sure you do vote. Come hell or high water. Don't let anyone stop.
stop you from casting your vote. So many of our foreparents died horrible deaths just so you and I would have the right to go to the polls and to cast our vote. Come rain or shine, cast your vote, brothers and sisters. The future of our nation depend upon it. And so when I say, if ever there was a need for prayer, we sure do need it now. I mean it. Uh, there's a whole lot we need to be praying for. Our families, our churches, our communities, our nation, this world, and for one another. With so much to pray for, so many ills of society looming large before us, one might be tempted to believe their individual prayers cannot possibly amount to any much, to anything. Someone might think, what effect can my prayers have on my life? or the lives of those around me. As quiet as it's kept, I'm sure there are those who should know better, but who deny the very power of prayer. They cannot wrap their heads around the fact that the God of this universe can and does hear the concerns of the afflicted, the downtrodden, and the outcast. But thanks be to God, the Bible offers ample evidence that there is power in prayer. Whether it was the cries of the children of Israel while being in Egyptian bondage, or Daniel praying in the lion's den, the Bible is clear. We serve a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. That's why I chose to look at this particular passage of scripture this morning. It comes from Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 8. This pericope is often referred to as the parable of the unjust judge. And it's found only in Luke's gospel. We all know what a parable is. It is, a, uh, it is an, uh, uh, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. This parable follows immediately after Jesus' teaching on the end of time in the previous chapter. Verse 1 of chapter 18 is not part of the parable proper, but rather is Luke's way of introducing the parable. He writes, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Luke understands that Jesus had a purpose for telling the following parable. And that purpose, and that purpose was simple, to teach his disciples, his followers, the importance of being patient, persistent, and persevering in prayer. What a lesson to learn. What a lesson to remember. Prayer is not something you do once and then forget about it. It's not a hit or miss kind of activity. Rather, it's something that you start and stick with and keep at until you receive the desired result. Prayer is not for the faint at heart or for the fly by night. It is not for the impatient or the spiritually immature who want what they want when they want it. No, prayer is for those who know God may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Prayer is for those who are willing to hang in there no matter what it looks like, because they know whatever it looks like, God is greater than what it looks like. Starting in the second verse, Jesus begins to tell this parable which has only two characters. A judge who neither feared God nor cared for or nor cared what people thought and a widow. This judge was controlled only by his own ideas and inclinations. Concerned only about uh, his own career and his own pocket. This widow was surely a symbol of helplessness. 
One was arguably the most powerful man in town. The other was at the bottom of the social economic standing in society. The widow had no husband to support or defend her. No adult son to speak on her behalf. She had to rely on this unjust judge and the, ju and the justice system of her day to right the wrong that had been inflicted on her. The Bible doesn't tell us what her problem was or the cause of her concern. It merely says she kept coming to the judge with one simple request. Grant me justice against my adversary. If she had the resources, she could have bribed the judge. But being poor and defenseless, she was armed with nothing but the fact that right was on her side. For she asked for justice, not vengeance. And she was armed with her own persistence. Day in and day out, she came before the judge with one plea only. Avenge me of my adversary. She did not waver in her appeal. She did not add to nor take away from her heart's desire. She was steadfast, unmovable, patient, persistent, and persevering in her request. But despite her consistency, the parable says, for some time, the judge refused. Can you imagine how this widow, this woman must have felt? Every time she asked, she received a negative response from the judge. Had that been some of us, we would have given up asking, turned our back on the judge, and never would have asked him again. But that's the very point of this parable. This woman did not give up. She asked and kept on asking. She knocked and kept on knocking. Quite possibly, when she least expected it, there was a turn in events. Something happened to the unjust judge. He finally said to himself, even though I don't fear God or what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and wear me out. It's interesting because the Greek literally means so that she won't eventually come and give me a black eye. In verse 6, Jesus says, listen to what the unjust judge says. The application of this parable is from minor to major, from the less from the lesser to the greater. That is, if a dishonest, uncaring judge can be motivated to grant justice to a poor, seemingly insignificant widow, how much more will a holy and caring God do for his own people who ask him? This parable teaches that persistent prayer pays off. So whatever you do, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying for your family. Don't stop praying for your neighbors. Don't stop praying for this country. Don't stop praying for this world. But it also teaches something about the faithfulness of God himself. Our cries do not fall on deaf ears, my brothers and sisters. There is a God who sits high and looks low. And he will bring about justice for his chosen ones. Those of us who cry out to him both day and night, he sees and he knows and he cares. I know this might sound strange to some, but in the grand scheme of things, in the eyes of God, Justice, den justice delayed is not justice denied. God's name is on the line. His reputation is at stake. Yeah, he leads us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I know the world is in a chaotic state. Folk are calling wrong right and right wrong. Uh, we need prayer now more than any other time in history. And we need a Savior who is able to deliver us from the evil one. His name is Jesus, the lily of the valley. 
Lord God, I admit that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask that Jesus will come into my life, forgive me of my sins, may the Holy Spirit take up residence in my life so that I may live to your glory. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. He was buried and he rose from the dead. Now God, I give you my life and I thank you, Jesus, for being my savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen and thank God, amen. amen. It is my belief that if you pray that simple prayer, that you have given your life to Christ and you are now part of the family of the redeemed. And so I certainly want to encourage those who have given their life to Christ to join a Bible-believing church as soon as you can. Uh, and we certainly want you to consider joining the South Hempstead Baptist Church here at 81 Maple Avenue. But it's not about membership, it's about relationship. Amen. And so we certainly want to encourage you to uh, walk with God uh, all the days of your life. Brothers and sisters, we have had a wonderful time here Amen. Uh, Amen. this morning. Amen. And it is my prayer uh, that God will continue uh, to walk with us and be with us. And it is my prayer, brothers and sisters, that each and every one of us will pursue to have a, a, an active prayer life. Um, and uh, if I ever pray that, preach that, message again, I, I, I may focus on the fact that she just she just had one prayer request. That's all. That's all. She was just she was consistent in that one prayer. No matter what it looked like, she consistently prayed that prayer. No matter how many times she was turned down, she had faith that eventually the unjust judge would grant her justice. And sure enough he did. And if an unjust judge can do that, certainly a holy and loving God can do the same and much more for you and I. So we thank you, brothers and sisters. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us bow for our closing prayer uh, and benediction. God, thank you, Lord, for this worship service. We thank you, Lord, for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. We ask, oh God, that you'll continue to be with us, walk with us, stand by us, protect us, bless our going out and our coming in from this day forth and even forevermore. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God who is our savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let us all sing together.